Hello there, and welcome to my 100% playthrough of Quake Scourge of Armagon on Nightmare. This is HIP2M5, Mortem's Keep. And welcome one, welcome all, to the final map of Episode 2. By far the hardest and by far the most BS of the bunch. Most of the BS resides in the final room. You'll see why. I'm not going to lie, it's probably going to kill me at least once or twice, if not more. But there is a uh, empath empathy shield that we can grab to hopefully help out with it. But that will be then. This is now. Yeah, already seeing a little trap here with two spike mines, two gremlins, and a fiend. If you run down here without getting any kills first, you're dead. Pretty much. Um, shooting that causes this door to rise up. There's a secret under the door as well as a secret above it. If you jump over to here, there's a red armor, which I will not be grabbing now because I don't need it. And I would like to go ahead and clear this area first. You don't have to, I just like to. There's another zombie. There's a lot of underwater zombies around here, so just be wary of them. Including one down there who doesn't want to die, apparently. Well, too bad. So if you go this way, be careful. You can probably see their silhouettes from the water. But yeah, those were spawns we just blew up. You didn't think you weren't going to see spawns again, did you? How naive. Fortunately, those are the only two spawns in this map. And even in Episode 3, I don't think there's that many of them, but... Even one spawn is too much. Whoa, and there's a spike mine right there. I almost ran right into him. Yeah, this starting room, by the way, is going to be home to a lot of spike mines going forward. So every time you're about to step out into it, just be careful. Go through these weird door spikes here to see a fiend. Two fiends. And that was a freaking spike. Oh my goodness. So one spawns when you go past the spike door, I guess. Oh my goodness me. Woo. I didn't know the spike mine teleported into that room so early. I guess I just didn't go back there and see him. Fortunately, that's okay. There's a red suit of armor that I save for a rainy day, just like this one. But yeah. Yeah, let, let that be a mere taste as to how BS this map is going to be. That button opens those bars, which drops you back down to where we killed the spawns. We have a Horn of Conjuring here, which actually gives you two enemies for the price of one. And... Seriously? No, not even worth it. When I played through this map a week or so ago before starting the whole recording process, I actually got an Ogre and a Fiend, which is a pretty low chance roll, I can only assume. But yeah, in my practice run, this time around I got two Rottweilers as well, so... Yay, I guess? So you enter this next room and leave. You're going to have knights, hell knights, and ogres, and fiends. You're going to have a nice smorgasbord. And there's going to be another fiend hiding behind here, and another one hiding behind here. And if you go and try to grab this armor, be careful. You're going to spawn in gremlins. Two more gremlins up there where there is a secret quad damage. And a fiend at the top of the stairs. Or, sorry, make that two fiends. And that hell knight may have already been there. I don't even know. Let's go ahead and clear out the uh, bad guys here. Now, careful around in this corner. There are two vores and two spike mines. Go ahead and take the spike mines out first. Oh, sorry, three spike mines. Man. I told you the map designers love spike mines. Oh, those things are just evil. I hate them. Let's go ahead and grab the silver key and head back out to this room before taking the silver key door, by the way. Align yourself here, and we're going to jump over to that little archway, and you're going to have to bonk your head on this metal bar up here. If you try to jump over here, that metal bar is going to block your jump. And it may still block it anyway. I just was lucky, I guess, to get it my first try last time. And now I'm going to struggle with it, aren't I? There we go. 
jump from here to the crate to open this wall. Jump over here to get this portal. Ooh, you know what? This might be nice to save for the final fight if I can even make it back there in time, but nah. You're gonna summon gremlins anyway. Really? Would you just die? Thank you. Quickly go through the silver key door. Spawn some more bad guys. Knights and ogres. Now we're back in the starting room again. Which means, you guessed it, more spike mines. And knights, hell knights. Another spike mine in there. Two more. Yeah, three more spike mines. Sorry, make that four more spike mines. And if you're really crafty, you can get that one to destroy the scrags. Now, before we head into there, secret number four is out here. Hop on top of the starting arch to open this wall with a mule near and two boxes of cells. Now, unfortunately, yeah, that jumps a little too high to make, so we'll have to go back the long way. That that high difference shouldn't be that much. You should be able to jump back up there. <clears throat> Excuse me. But fortunately, it's not that much of a backtracking trek. Now, this next room contains your fifth secret and also some ogres. Go ahead and get into this corner here to protect yourself. There's two ogres on both sides. And then there's two buttons you have to shoot to get out. Actually, no, there's only two ogres, right? No ogres over here. But secret number five's in here as well. Watch out, there's enemies below that grate, which we will go ahead and kill once we grab this secret for a nice hundred health. Shooting that button opens that door. But let's whip out a weapon we hardly ever use. Yeah, look at all those bad guys down there. Rottweilers, Knights of Vor. Wow, the Rottweiler of all enemies survives all that. Interesting. Yeah, and ironically, they would be guarding a freaking pentagram of protection. And speaking of that pentagram, we will be going and grabbing it, but you better be careful. Be prepared. Because when you grab it, you will spawn in, I think, three or four fiends on both sides of you. Go ahead and use your cells on them. There's plenty to pick up. And there's uh, another room down here which contains the gold key as well as some zombies and scrags. Go ahead and blow that up before I blow, it up, blow myself up with it. Where the hell is a zombie? Boy, if you don't get your zombie ass out of here. And then grabbing the key, we'll spawn in two scrags. And that's it. Yeah, the pentagram is only really needed for that fiend ambush. It's kind of stupid, in my opinion. Let's go ahead and restock on some cells. You're going to want to save as many cells as you can for the final fight. You'll see why. But the fight itself is not so bad. It's the environmental hazard that makes it such an absolute pain in the ass. But anyway, we have the gold key. We're about ready to leave this map. Here's hoping that the final part doesn't just end my life. We're going to be using that empathy shield to good use. Now, <laughs> oh man, this is evil. Open the door, immediately back away. Yeah, look at that. That's just, that's just dickish. Why would you put that there? Let's go ahead and take all these guys out from range. You can use as many rockets as you want, by the way. You're not going to run out of them. <clears throat> but we're going to summon a knight, a few hell knights and a fiend, and in the pool of water the fiend came from is actually an empathy shield. Now you're going to want to use that for the final part. Again, you'll see why. Honestly, were it not for the whole environmental hazard part of things, you wouldn't even need to rush the final part, but you kind of do for this. Oh, I probably should have saved that 100 health. Even with the empathy shield, it may not be enough. But before we grab that... Press in that stone to open secret number six for a yellow armor in case you need it. Now, at the bottom of this pool is an empathy shield and the button that opens that door. We're going to open that door and rush on through. 
There are going to be shamblers and ogres. There's also a lightning generator that will shock the hell out of you. Grab the 100 health. Head over to the button. Destroy the machine. Hopefully we can get back without dying. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you, empathy shield. That, oh, wow. That worked out perfectly. Okay. Wow. Okay, that was, that was amazing. That was awesome. So, yeah, basically what happens is you grab the empathy shield, or you go out here, and when you get close enough to the machine, that little lightning generator, it will start to shock you. And it does a crap ton of damage. So, what you have to do is press this button. You literally have to take damage to get to it. It's, it's, it's stupid. I hate this design. But you go in between the machines with all those three shamblers attacking you. Fortunately, you have empathy shields to reflect some of their damage back at them, and you have enough armor to deal with it. But you press the button, an earthquake happens, so you lose a little bit of uh, your movement control, and the machine starts to explode. It explodes here, it explodes here, it explodes here, and it's just everywhere. So that's why you really need the empathy shield to reflect some of that damage back. Not that this thing can take damage, per se, in the traditional sense, because it's not an enemy, it's a piece of the environment, but still. The empathy shield soaks up, I believe, half of the damage that you take. And so it's nice to have... Can I not reopen this? Oh, okay, it's a one-time use switch. Oh, no, it's not. Okay. Good. Now, I want this armor. Now, we are about to go from episode to episode, so we're going to lose all of our stuff. But the reason I want as much armor as I can get is because when you f uh, flip this lever to open the gate, two more shamblers will spawn in. One over here and one actually inside the exit gate. So we're just going to make a run for it. Kill that first shambler. <coughs> And kill the second one, just like that. Holy crap, one try, I can't believe it, let's go. And that is Mortem's Keep, the final map of Episode 2. Very fittingly the final map, because of how freaking BS and difficult it can get. And wow, yes, Empathy Shield. Oh, Empathy Shield, I love you. That was such a, that was so clutch. Such a lifesaver. So yeah, that exploding lightning generator at the very end that you have to destroy to leave the map, basically, or else it'll just shock you to death, no matter how much health and armor you have. That part sucks. I hate it. Honestly, were it not for you having an empathy shield there, I think the only way you could possibly survive that is by just... just, just bum-rushing with the... You know, I don't even know. Like, you may have... You, you may have had to save that quad damage, which was secret number three or four, and then bum rush your way back to the final, mow down the shamblers if you had enough time, and then take care of the generator from there. You should have enough time. I might try to test that next time. I'll just, like, ignore the gremlins so I don't waste too much time with them. Like, mow down the shamblers, destroy the machine, hope you don't die, and get out. But, yeah. God, that final part's a pain in the ass. And, of course, you have three shamblers blocking the generator, which, conveniently enough, doesn't hurt them. It just hurts you. And you have two ogres grenading you from above, and then if you can escape the earthquake and the exploding machine, which, again, thank you, Empathy Shield. Without you, that would not have been possible. Um, you then have to flip a lever to leave, and that summons in two more shamblers. So yeah, this map is a... This map's a test, that's for sure. I cannot believe it took me one try to beat this. I was fully expecting that final part to kill me at least a couple of times. And then I started to think, oh, maybe the Empathy Shield can absorb some of that explosive damage from the... From the lightning machine being destroyed, and I can just hope that helps. And it did. Wow. It really did. <sighs> but yeah, that's Mortem's Keep. Hope you enjoyed that little workout. And since this is the end of episode two, you know what that means. Epilogue text time. A nice little cooldown. After destroying the power generator, yeah, screw that thing, you pass beyond the gates of Mortem's Keep. A wave of nausea suddenly flows over you, and you find yourself cast out into a liquid void. You float lifelessly, yet aware, in a lavender sea of energy. After what seems like an eternity, you feel the presence of a diabolical intelligence. You are held helpless for a moment as you or as your mind is open to that of Armagon, Quake's general and master of this realm. 
recognizing you as the one who foiled his attempt to conquer Earth, a hellish howl fills your mind and blots out all consciousness. When you awake, you find yourself on the shores of reality, but in a time and place unknown to you. Yes, this is where we finally, aside from the name of the expansion, this is where we first see the name Armagon, the main antagonist of this expansion, and the mastermind of this whole second invasion attempt. So he is the one that we must kill. Well now, if it is him we must kill, then kill him we will. But for now, that is the end of episode two. Hope everyone enjoyed that little jaunt. I know I'm happy to be uh, to have it be over with. I'll tell you that much. Episode three, map one is a bit annoying, but every map after that is actually pretty fun. Not a whole lot of annoying BS traps and the like. Just hard combat, as it should be. But that was episode two. I hope everyone enjoyed it. Episode three, the final episode, will soon follow. And until that comes, I will see you all when I see you. Bye bye.